Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Engineering clock finally out. Only 200 pieces, limited time thingy. So check it out, link everywhere down there. We are going to talk about exponentiation today yet again. And we are going to talk about something that you often find in exercises, namely that you are supposed to group common terms in some way common factors. And this is what we are going to do today. We are going to take a look at something that can't really be generalized at first glance. Namely, we are going to multiply different exponentiations together with different bases and different exponents. This is supposed to be an M, not an N. Meaning, we don't have a situation where we have a to the nth power times a to the mth power. We derived this rule before. Doesn't work out. And we don't have something like a to the nth power times b to the nth power right now. Really doesn't work out for us. There's no generalized rule that we can use here to kind of make it simpler for us. But we can get a feeling for certain types of exercises. This is what we are going to do today. Taking a look at two little examples such that you get a little fear for it. And later in the game, at the end of the series, we are going to do a little practice session yet again, where you can um, practice yet again how to do stuff like this. We're going to take a look at a simple example for now. For example, 2 to the third power times 8 squared. And at first glance, it doesn't look like we can simplify anything here. I mean, we have different bases and different exponents. What can we do here? Well, we are going to decompose our 8 here. We are going to write it differently. Just imagine we want to write the 8 as a product of really small things. This is called a prime factorization. I'm not going to go into much detail about it. You just need to get a feeling for it. Later there's going to be a dedicated playlist about prime numbers and prime factorizations. Let's just imagine that 8 is nothing but 2 times 4. I hope you agree with me. If you have 4 plus 4, it's 8. Great. So 2 times 4 is nothing but 8, but 4 is nothing but 2 times 2. So 8 is nothing other than 2 times 2 times 2. 2 multiplied with itself 3 times is 2 to the third power. Let us write this out. So this is 2 to the third power times, and now associativity please, 2 to the third power and then squared. Now we are going to make use of an exponentiation rule we have derived before. It's important to know these. If you don't know them anymore, take a look into the exponentiation playlist and rewatch it please. It's important for all that we are going to do here now. Now if we exponentiate an exponential, we are going to multiply the exponents together. Meaning what we have here is 2 to the third power times 2 to the third 3 times 2 power. Let's put it like this. So this is 2 to the 3 times 2 power. And 3 times 2 is nothing but 6. And this is good. This is 6. This is way better, right? Now we have a common base and different exponents, meaning we are going to make use of the one exponentiation rule where we gather the common base together and we are going to add our exponents together. 3 plus 6 makes 2 to the 9th power. And then we are done and this looks way better, right? So, so we turn this thing into something that we can actually compute. This should be 512, okay? Um, half of 1024. So yeah, this is what we have here and this worked out better than expected, right? Even though we can find a generalized formula for this expression, we can still make use of prime factorizations to end up with something nice. Let's, let us take a look at a different example. Let us take a look at um, what have I used before in the German version 15 to the third power times 18 squared. And this yet again doesn't look like something that we can simplify. But we are going to take a look at the prime factorization yet again. Let us begin with 15. There are actually only two ways really to write 15 as a product of things. Either you take 1 times 15 or you take, well, can you guess it? Yes, 3 times 5. We are going to rewrite the 15 as 3 times 5. And this whole thing to the third power, use the associativity yet again, it's important here, times. Now let us think how, how we can rewrite the number 18. Well, 18 is nothing but well, 2 times 9. And 9 is nothing other than 3 squared, 3 times 3. Let us write it out. So this is times 2 times 3 squared and the whole thing squared yet again. And now, once again, we are going to make use of exponentiation rules. We are going to distribute our exponent into each and every base here. This has been the one with different bases, but same exponents. This makes 
3 to the third power times 5 to the third power. And yet again, I would like to emphasize, if you don't know these exponentiation rules anymore, please rewatch the playlist. They are really important. They are going to haunt you through the whole of your school life. Please, please re um, recap what we did before, all right? So now for the next part, times, then 2 squared, and other than that, 3 squared and the whole thing squared times associativity, 3 squared and the whole thing squared. Yet again, we are exponentiating an exponential, meaning 3 squared, squared is nothing but 3 ta to the 2 times 2 power, which is 3 to the 4th power. That's a lot of stuff to say. <laughs> and now, what is really left to use is the commutativity, meaning we can just, um, yeah, interchange. It really doesn't matter how you operate. So, so if you take 3 to the third power times something or something times 3 to the third power, really doesn't change what you are doing. It just holds in the natural numbers, for example. So we are going to bring the 3 cubed to the side and then we have 3 cubed times 3 to the fourth power, same base, different exponent, makes 3 to the 3 plus fourth power. Let us write it out. So this is 5 to the third power times 2 squared times and then 3 to the 3 plus 4th power and 3 plus 4 makes 7. And then we are done. It really doesn't look any better um, at, at first sight. So if you have this or this, I mean now you have three things to compute, but it's easier in my opinion to compute this than computing 15 to the third power. So 15 times 15 is 225 and then this thing times 15 is just a mess and multiplying this with 18 times 18 is even more of a mess. So this is kind of better to evaluate because 5 to the third power is 125 times 4 is going to give you 500 exactly and this times 3 to the seventh power this is the biggest thing to evaluate. This is kind of hard to evaluate 3 to the seventh power. It's going to be quite a big number. But we have grouped common terms, uh, common factors in some way. And this was the point of the exercise here. And I hope you understand now that there is no generalized formula for this right here. But we can put in a bit of work to maybe simplify it like this up here. And maybe it does work out and maybe it makes your life easier. And then you can just cancel out fractions way nicer. Because if you have prime factorizations, canceling out fractions is going to become really easy. But we are going to talk about this on the playlist on fractions. Other than that, I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you like, go over to the main channel, take a look at the engineering wardlock, blah, blah, blah. And up until the next video, I'm wishing you guys a flamble day. Ciao.